next up, let's get the shopping list out of the way. <clears throat> if you're gonna build a retro pie, you're gonna need a couple of things. First thing you're gonna need is obviously a Raspberry Pi. Picked this up at Micro Center. Um, apparently they're a lot easier to find in Europe than they are in America, but here you go. I grabbed the Raspberry Pi Model B, three Model B. Apparently the price is 35 bucks. So that should be what you're expecting to pay for it. Um, next up, let's see here. We've got a micro SD. You can really do various sizes. Uh, this one in particular is a 32 gig. Um, you do want to check the compatibility list. And I should point out everything I'm doing here can be found at a website uh, retropie.co or sorry, retropie.org.uk. Um, and there is a compatibility list there where you can check what will work. Uh, these are well known, the Micro Center ones, uh, to be um, very useful. Um, one of the links I'm going to give you is an Amazon site that, uh, that actually they kind of bundle together all these accessories in one and they give a 32 gig card as well. Those are pretty useful uh, too. Um, so, as far as size goes, as far as I know, the Raspberry Pi will support up to, I think, 128 gigs. Um, you don't want to use those unless you're going to use disk-based media. Uh, well, I mean, you can, but it's like an extra cost you might not need. Um, and this is when you're doing stuff such as uh, uh, Sony PlayStation, um, Sega CD possibly, but even those games are pretty small. But if you're going to have a bunch of them, yeah, Turbo CD, things like that, anything CD-based. Cart-based, you'll do pretty good. Um, for a very small amount of space, so you really don't need it. Most people say about 8 to 16 gigs. I'm doing 32 to be safe. The other thing is for the first time through, I've never done this, so we are doing this together. Uh, the first time through, um, that's for strip. Uh, the first time through, we're just going to put in the regular Raspberry Pi. I'll try some dual stuff and also uh, chatters. We'll see how many people we get kind of watching the show and everything. If we get enough people in here and there's other systems and stuff you want to check, we definitely can. I can see I've got more than one viewer. So viewers out there, uh, as we go along with this, depending on time and, and, and how this goes, there's more stuff you want to see. We'll go into more stuff because uh, Raspberry Pi is um, cool, but it's not, it's not wonderfully user-friendly uh, at first glance. You got to kind of get used to it. So anyway, next up, this is the accessories bundle that I bought. Uh, this thing I bought for, uh, these accessory bundles usually go for about 18 to 20. Uh, there is a version that also comes with the 32 gig card, which is probably the best way to do it, especially if you don't have a micro center nearby, uh, which is 25. And then you get your micro SD card and everything you need. Um, but these bundles come from China. So your shipping is not going to be the greatest, but the one I got off of eBay, uh, got here in about a week. Um, so we'll go through real quick what comes with it. First things first, HDMI cable. That's always important when hooking up. I will be using this for this console. In fact, this is a relatively long cable. I think it's about five feet. Um, it seems like decent build. HDMI is not too picky, especially with the Raspberry Pi. Um, but I do have a special hookup here, which I'm going to use because I'm going to use the capture device. So I've got that pre-hooked up. Next thing, you will see these a lot with the Raspberry Pi. These are your heat sinks. They even have recommended ways to use them um, to kind of reduce heat and overheating and whatnot on your Raspberry Pi. Um, and uh, this is what they look like. Uh, it is said that the big ones should be copper and the small ones should be uh, nickel plated, I believe. And that's what I have here. Um, so here's the here's my take on it. And you can either take it or leave it. Um, these aren't really necessary if you're just going to run a traditional Pi, especially if you're not going to overclock it. Now, I did hear that if you want to start rocking the N64, some of the tax, more taxing PlayStation 1, and anything higher than that type games, you may need to overclock. If you're going to overclock, which I'm not going to do here, and I'm probably not going to mess with for a while until I'm more comfortable with the Pi, then these heat sinks may be useful. But I've also heard that these cheap knockoff Chinese heat sinks may not be of much value either. So anyway, as of right now, I'm not going to put them on there. Um, but I will try to identify the sites at which they go, just in case people are wondering. Uh, next up is, is a fan. This has the exact same rules. I have been told you do not need a fan unless you are planning to overclock it, which I am not. Um, but just so people know what's in the in the package. So you get a little fan. This is ideal for all of your Raspberry Pi installations. It's got the four screws and the four bolts, which is uh, the four corners, which is usually going to have a port or something on there. 
And then these are your two uh, power ports. I'm guessing negative and positive, just from what I know about basic electronics. And uh, those plug into certain pins on the Raspberry Pi, which we'll get into shortly when we start looking at the device. Again, this is going to be, for starters, for just uh, real beginner level, let's make a retro pie and do as little as possible. I might do a follow-up broadcast once I'm more familiar with it. I'm just wondering and wanting to do it this way because there's probably some great like how to's and tutorials and stuff. But I bet those people start with like a heavy knowledge base. And while I'm pretty versatile with computers, I'm actually really just good at following directions as opposed to being too clever at anything else, which is why I'm probably pretty good at building PCs because I just follow the directions to the T. Um, and I'm wondering if that if that policy applies to the RetroPie. We're definitely going to find out today. So anyway, so that's the first part of the accessories. But kids, the accessory pack is not done. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, okay, this is your AC adapter. These are always important. Um, in America, uh, the AC adapter that I got here is most important. As you can see, it's got a micro, not mini, but micro USB on one side, and it is a 5 volt 2.5 milliamp. I have been told, 2.5 amp rather, I've been told that is the ideal AC power supply. Um, let's see, I will be using this to power the Pi, of course, so we'll put that there for a second. Actually, we're going to just stack these up as I get the items that I'm going to use. Um, next up, but wait, there's more. Yes, you guys love unboxings, right? All right, let's see here. I think this is the case. Let's open this up. And yes, friends, this is the Raspberry Pi case. There are various different cases and they look various different ways. Um, I'll talk about the, the retro ones in case you want something that's more aesthetically pleasing in a minute. But, uh, but for now, I figured, you know, daddy's first case would be fun to just take whatever they offered me, which is a goofy looking case, if you want my honest opinion. So here we go. This is the case itself. Kind of looks like a cheap plastic piece of whatnot. Um, and I don't even know. Yeah, I guess they're screws, but they're plastic screws. So here's my first case. Yay. It's got a lot of slots and stuff. I'm sure somebody on the internet's going to be like, actually, man, if you know anything about the Raspberry Pi, this is like an ideal place. You can see it's got spots for everything, though. Like the fans got a spot here and uh, all the ports kind of have their own little slots and things like that. So we'll be working with those in a minute. I don't know if I'm going to use that case or not. Now, I know a lot of you retro people. Oh, here we go. Uh, UA Nunya. I didn't order this kit because I thought it had plenty of power supplies. Many problems from not turning on to not being uh, able to complete the controller setup until I got the proper power supply. Okay, well, if I do have that problem, I do have Micro Center up the street and I might have to do a reboot, but thank you for, for the warning. I have heard that the power supply is a big problem with these uh, Chinese kits. Um, so it could be a risk uh, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to take. We'll see how it goes, but thank you very much, UA Nunya, because that may be my problem right there. Um, and the last part, the part that people probably overpay for, um, <clears throat> there are various ways to do this, better ways to do this. But again, I'm doing this as like a, a starting point, which is these cheap SNES controllers from China. Again, I have true SNES controllers and there's some great controllers that go straight to USB. I might be using those in the future. Um, you can also use a wired Xbox 360 controller. Uh, you can really use any P, uh, sorry, USB device uh, interface. Um, but for now, these are them. Now, eh, I go back and forth as to what I think about the build quality. But as you can see on the on the camera, it looks serviceable enough. Uh, let's see, D-pad seems okay. It's not quite Nintendo standard. Um, eh. Shoulders are okay. The big candy buttons are just fine. Start and select are a little goofy, but we'll see. Again, cheap knockoff controllers. It's 20 bucks. It's a fun project. Let's see how it goes. Um, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, and uh, that's life, and I've got plenty of alterations. Again, I'm trying to emulate uh, the situation that a lot of people in this country are going to have when they just buy, like, Raspberry Pi stuff. And again, I wouldn't have to do this if Nintendo could do a decent job of stocking you shelves with SNES classic editions. Although that being said, I guess we won't know and won't see until a little bit later. 
Uh, he says, I have the cheap SNES controller too, but it works fine for me. But I got the wireless 8-bit Do NES 30 Pro, and I've not tried it yet. Well, for what it's worth, and I'll be giving that a go in the future, I do have twin uh, 8-bit Do's. I have the NES 30 and the Super Famicom 30 uh, for my Switch. And, of course, that does have a, uh, a mode I can use with the Bluetooth on this. So, um, But this was, again, a starting point. Uh, as you can see, this is the second controller. feels exactly the same. Again, these are cheap controllers just made. Uh, they got these, this fun little defect right here. Uh, I wonder if that's almost intentional for some patent reasons or who knows. Anyway, um, but I think... What's up, Jedi Slurpee? Welcome. Um, the SNES Classic will be playing Atari 2600, 2600 or Sega games, so still win. That's right. And Strip Mahjong says, 8-bit does are great. Haven't had any trouble with mine. No, the 8-bit does are fantastic. Uh, the biggest problem I have with mine is that the battery consistently dies, but that's just because I'm using it a lot. The battery life is actually quite solid on it. Anyway, so here's your spread. Here's pretty much what you need to get going, and the case is really optional. I'll see if I want to put it in a case uh, once we get it up and running. But... Here we go. So, uh, all right. 8-bit uh, does, if you have a Micro Center near you, I'm not trying to pimp Micro Center. I get nothing in kickbacks from them. But uh, Micro Center does have the 8-bit does uh, if you're like me and you just want them now. Uh, the hardest part about this whole process has been waiting. So, all right. Let's get started. Let's get started. Okay. So, again, like I said, I'm doing this from scratch. I don't know a whole lot about this. Um, but, uh, oh, UA Nunya, uh, he says he's not sure if they ever go on sale. I got mine for 35 bucks. I don't know if that's good or not. Um, but anyway. All right. So I'm on the Raspberry Pi or the RetroPi website. It says you need, uh, I've already gone through the list. I have the things that it says I need. Um, it does say a 5 volt, uh, 2.5 amp for the Pi 3. So apparently mine's okay. But here we go. So downloads, we're going to download the RetroPie. I don't know. Do you, hmm, let's see. Why don't we show people what I'm seeing? So we'll make that easy for people. We will, let's see here. Let's add this. Do, 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 do. Okay, let's see what we got here. So Chrome, are you going to be able to handle this or not? Let's see if Chrome likes to be, no, Chrome doesn't like to be there. Okay. So let's see. Let's see if I can do a different one. Um, hmm. Let's see if Chrome likes to be over here. I'm going to try this one more time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Chrome does not. Okay, well then... We are just going to not use that. Uh, all right. So anyway, I'm on the Ra RetroPie website, and I'm downloading the Raspberry Pi uh, 2 slash 3 version. Um, and apparently, uh, the way you tell is uh, how many raspberries are on boot. So I'm apparently going to see four raspberries on boot. So here we go. Here is the download. Downloading it now. And it's... It's a little sizable. It's 600 megs. Um, shouldn't take too long, but uh, I am streaming, so that may affect something. Um, UA Nunya, I'm not building purely from scratch using an image. I'm, I'm, yes, uh, Jedi Slurpee Jam did build one of these, uh, but of course, uh, we never talked about it. <laughs> so again, I'm just going through the process of let's take random dude who decides he wants to build one of these and brings it home and puts it together, and can we pull it off? I, I feel pretty confident. We'll pull it off, but, uh, but hey, you never know. So, um, while that's downloading, we got about two minutes. Uh, anybody got any, anything interesting to, to, uh, talk about? Mm. Actually, while we're talking, let's open up the pie itself. Take a look at what's in here. Let's make the unboxing full. So here we go. Raspberry Pi regulatory stuff. And of course, anti-static. You don't want to get any static electricity there. So I've got a metallic device over here. I'm touching it. I know a lot of people are like, that doesn't, that's not good enough. Get an anti-static wristband or whatever. I could do that too. Anyway, all right. So here's the Raspberry Pi. Um, as you can see, there are different locations. So you know those heat sinks that I had? I bet a copper one goes here, I bet the nickel one goes here, and I bet the other copper one goes there. Seems pretty obvious, those are the three chips. 
um, that seems to be the place to go. As you can see here, there's various different ports. Um, the port that I'm most interested in for AV is, uh, is the HDMI, but I guess you can do a composite breakout. That's the USB-C, or sorry, U mini USB for micro USB for, uh, for power. There's your four USB slots and of course your, uh, your um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Your USBs and then these are the pins. This is for if you were gonna use the fan or anything else like that. So anyway, there's the Raspberry Pi. How much was the Pi? It was $34.99 if you want to just walk into Micro Center and buy it. So um, that's pretty much a good price. I don't think I've seen too many people do too much better. So anyway, uh, da, da, da. so we're, we're about to get started on this expedition. Let's see if I can figure out where certain things go like starting with where the hell do you put the micro SD card? Hmm. There are a couple of things covered up here. Sorry, I'll show you where I'm looking. So here's the USB stuff. Aha, underneath that is where you put the micro SD card. Always important to kind of look for areas like that. Another fun thing is I don't see any mounting screws. This thing needs four mounting screws. Whoa. Sorry about the whoop. This thing needs four mounting screws and I don't see them in the box. Maybe you have to provide your own. That would make sense. It's logical. See how that goes. All right. So here we go. All right, back back to Twitch Central. We are going to come over here and let's check real quick. Oh, of course, of course, I may <laughs> I may have company in a minute, but all right, let's see what we can get going. Um, all right, so the download is complete. So let's move this over here. Oh, of course, that's not going to work well. There we go. All right. So I'm opening this up. Let me see if I can show you guys what I'm seeing. Here we go. We'll, we'll kind of finagle this so you guys can see what's, what's going on as it's going on. So right now it's extracting uh, and I believe I'm gonna get a .img file. The speed of fiber, 600 megs in three minutes. I don't know if that's really good or not, but this is also a Wi-Fi connection, so I guess that works. Um, but uh, yeah, so. All right, it is complete. So now let's, let's change what we're looking at. All right, so there you go. This is, we'll bring it over here. So this is the file itself, this image file. And uh, you don't see it, but I'm just going to drag this image file to the desktop. And just in case you want a status update on that. We'll watch that go. This computer is not the fastest on the market, but it's doing okay. So far, so good. So far, so pleased. Okay, so we have that done. So we can close that. Next up, I need to get Win32 Disk Imager, apparently. It's for writing from US, or writing to USB sticks or SD cards. So 
I'm going to download this from uh, SourceForge again. This is on Chrome, which for some reason wasn't popping up in OBS, so sorry about that. Um, so I've just downloaded that. And I'm going to install this with some mild reluctance. Build a Hackintosh, <laughs> my you guys are tempting me. <laughs> All right, I have to accept a license agreement. Uh, let me see, let's see if I can add this in. Hold on real quick, guys. Here we go. All right. So here's where you guys can watch the installer with me. All right. So we'll go here. We'll call it Image Writer. Sure, let's create a desktop shortcut. I'm probably going to install it after I'm done with it or just get rid of the shortcut. But here we go. Uh, view read me. Uh, maybe. All right, I'll just do them. Why not? Okay, so disk imager did load up. Interesting. <clears throat> cool. Thank you uh, for the uh, the Hackintosh stuff. Okay, so let's go over here and here's what I see. It's just a little window like this. So now let's go over here. Uh, da, da, da. to install it to the micro SD card, you'll need to do this. Okay, so that's the only instructions you get from RetroPie. See what I'm talking about, kids? Where like this is kind of do it yourself. So let's take the next step. Let's get this micro SD card installed. I am curious how they want it formatted. Let's see if it tells me. If I'm going to guess, I'm gonna say it's FAT32, but let's see. Okay, we it doesn't say here. Um, all right. <laughs> okay. So next up, let's get this plugged in. It's always important to have a nice uh, card reader. What you do? Does micro, although the micro center one comes with an adapter as well. So we'll plug this in. Okay, so let me check something real quick. I just did a quick Google search and it says, I'm trying to figure out what format it should be. And it says, uh, Raspberry Pi bootloader built in GPO and non-updatable only has Okay, apparently it can read 32 and FAT32 and FAT16. So I think we're gonna format this to FAT32. So let's go back here, take a look at y'all peeps and let's add one more. This time we're gonna do this one, no. Okay. So here's my G drive. It's not the cleanest thing in the world, but anyway. Whoop. All right, so here's my G drive. Um, and let's come over here and format it. Let's go to FAT32. Why not? Beep. 
formats complete. I'm guessing we may have lost. Yep, you lost the image when that happened. Okay. So now, let's see. As you can see, the USB, I believe this is the one I just fat 32 would uh, and it is. So now we've got this lovely G drive. I'm going to close it so that it goes away. Um, and for now, we will remove it from this. Um, okay, so first things first, image file. Um, so we will we have to navigate to the image file. I didn't put it in downloads. I put it on the desktop. So when we go to the desktop, there's the RetroPie image file. Oh, you guys can't see this. Okay, hold on. Okay, so here's what I did. I navigated just on the side here to the desktop and here's the RetroPie image file. So I'm gonna double click on that and then there we go. It's ready to go. I know the device is G, although it only detected G anyway. Uh, when I click on this, uh, you can't see it, but a drop down just shows G. Um, and I don't know what else to say, so I'm going to just write it. Can corrupt the device. Are you sure you want to continue? Yes. So I don't know if that warning box popped up, but there we go. Now we'll just watch this go. What am I looking to play on the RetroPie? I don't know. MAME is probably the main one, but I also like to have it to like take to parties and just whip out and just say, hey guys, let's, let's play some games. You know what I mean? I also like over here, if you guys are looking, that there's a little status indicator. I know this is going to take two minutes. Um, so I know this is probably a joke for people who have built these before and, and, and are saying this, that, or the other, uh, I do have a fun little surprise and maybe I should just show you guys now. Um, so check this out. So I apologize for those of you who don't like coarse language, but I prepared this for this very, um, thing. This is my, uh, this is my fuck Nintendo collection, um, that I've, I've put together and if you look for right now, um, it's got literally what is on the NES Classic Edition, plus a couple of extras like Akumajo Densetsu or Castlevania III uh, English Translated. And uh, let's face it, the Contra Famicom version is the best one, and it's now been English Translated. So I threw on a couple of extras. And like Punch-Out! with Mr. Dream, we all know Mike Tyson's Punch-Out!'s what should really be on there. Also, the SNES, here is everything on the SNES Classic Edition. Now, granted, the Star Fox 2 that I have will probably not be the Star Flo Fox 2 that's in, because this is the one that was stolen from Tokyo Game Show. This won't be the one that's in the actual one, but I'll replace it as soon as that's ripped and, and, and presented. And the Genesis stuff, you'll laugh. This is the... Um, <laughs> These are the uh, top 10 community and the top 10 uh, Gaming History 101 games all put on here. So that's why you see those there. But uh, let's see here. What's my case? Uh, people will, I've already kind of shown the case, but uh, Blake, that's what the case looks like. Although I've got parts just falling off this thing. Um, there are little uh, bolt screws at the bottom of this and it's just coming off. This is probably not going to be the case I'm going to use, uh, to be honest. Um, the case I'm probably going to be using is either a more traditional case or um, realistically, I'll probably use the case that uh, is um, the Super Nintendo case that's out there. Now, between you and me, guys, I do not like the, uh, I do not like the, uh, this is such an interesting case here. While we're doing this, let's let's pull these out and take a look at the case real quick. You need to format the disk on drive H. It must have partitioned something. Um, do you want to format it? Oh, hell. Um, yeah, the Super Nintendo cases are cool. I don't like the 3D printed stuff. So that's just what I will say right off the bat. Uh, do we format it? Sure, why not? We'll format it to FAT32. Well, let's actually... 
Okay, that's fine. Windows can't format H. Maybe it's not formatted for a reason. Um, okay, the write was successful. Let me see what you guys see. I got to pull up my OBS viewer. Okay, you guys don't even see the little box. So if you guys want to laugh, um, let me show you what I'm looking at here. Yay, this is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing write was successful. So if I say okay, it goes away. Um, and then it went back to the, the other one. Okay, we'll get rid of you for now. Um, okay, uh, the 3D printed ones do look like crap, UA Nunya. Um, there is on Etsy, I'll try to find it, and I need to get it in and see what it looks like. It is a plastic molded case, so it looks like it'd be better. Um, all right, so now that we've got this done, I'm going to close Disk Manager for right now. There's Verify. Eh, it doesn't matter. Okay, I'm going to close this for right now. And uh, it could be sweet. It could be crap. So I'm going to be honest with you. I don't, I don't know which one it's going to be yet. Um, so let's see. We have this. Okay, so let me bring up what I'm seeing so you guys can see it. So there's this new G drive called the boot G. Whoa, this is big. Let's, let's bring you down a little bit. Anyway, here, we'll, we'll do this up here. Let's, let's take up the whole screen for a minute. All right, or most of the screen at least. Um, so it says boot G. There's a bunch of stuff on here. Obviously it's set up the whole RetroPie thing. Now I'm gonna pull this up. Uh, the free space is only 36 megs, which is interesting. Um, okay, so it looks like the boot G drive only has 20 it's using 20 megs and it has 36 left. I feel like there's something here I'm not seeing. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. So for now, I'm going to close that and call it. Um, which means I might have to do... <laughs> oh, yeah, you could use it with an X-Arcade stick if you wanted to. Um, all right, so before we do anything else, uh, I think it's time to eject this thing and use it for um, for the pie and see what happens. Well, actually, let's see what the first installation thing says. Okay, so... Okay. RetroPie is built on top of Raspbian. And as such, the partition on the SD card is a Linux file system, which is not visible to Windows systems. So the card will show up as a smaller size than usual, and you won't be able to see everything on the card, but it's all there. You'll be able to access the file system over the network as described in the transferring ROM section below. So I'm smart that I didn't uh, format it because that would have been bad. Um, so next up, next step looks like I just need to plug this thing in. So um, just in case, since you guys can't see it, I'm going to uh, I'm going to eject the USB device and pull this bad boy out. And now let's assemble the pie. Okay, so for our current uses, here is the micro SD card that I've just installed. And here is Raspberry Pi, and things go the way I think they should. This guy just goes in there like so. Hopefully that's the right way, but that's the way I've got it in there. Next up, we are going to need to hook up the power supply, of course. This is the moment of truth, according to uh, Nunya. <laughs> so we'll find out in a sec. 
let's see here. Of course, like the Nintendo Classic Edition, the cord's not very long. Let's see what I can do. And I get it to reach. Okay, cool. So next up, before I plug this in, because I think it boots right away. I don't think there's an on-off switch for it. Got the HDMI cable. I need a thick one. Plug that in there. Make sure it's flush. And then for... Controllers, we'll plug those in as well. Okay, we got those plugged in. Sorry, I've neglected the chat for a second. There we go. Uh, okay. And last but not least, let's plug in the power. Okay, so if you look over here, Okay, and we've got blinky lights. So, we got the gamepad. We're gonna take it, it says, hold a button for a device to configure it. USB gamepad, okay. D-pad up, up. D-pad down, down. D-pad left, D-pad right. Start, select. A, B, X, Y, left shoulder, right shoulder. I don't have a left trigger or right trigger. So, uh, okay, so we've hit our first snag. Let's see, hold any button to skip. It says hold any button to skip. So, Let's hold any button to skip. We're getting rid of all the analogs. And some people are probably like, no, you want to have your right analogs and left analogs to other stuff, but not me. Okay. So here's the RetroPie now. All right, now we have a menu. So... I think we can do certain things at this point. Maybe this is where you get to start being creative on your own. <laughs> so, okay, let's see here. So I'm gonna press start for a menu. And let's see here. Let's go to sound settings. Oh, okay, don't press start again. Let's see, don't press A again. Okay, sorry, A is the button I wanna press, B is back, so system volume, enable sounds, okay. So we're good so far. Others, oh, configure input. Are you sure you want to configure input? Yes. Okay, hold a button on a device to configure it. Up, down, left, right. Start, select, 
A, B, X, Y. We'll go through this process again. Ugh, you know what? I screwed up. I'm gonna have to redo it because I didn't do the shoulders. Wonder if it'll let me. Up, oh, already taken. <laughs> So in my quickness, I screwed up some stuff. So let's do it again. Yes, I'm sure. Up, down, left, right, start, select, A, B, X, Y, left shoulder, right shoulder. And now we can skip through this stuff. Uh, actually, I don't need to configure Wi-Fi. I'm going to try this with USB first, believe it or not. Um, I know people are like, what? You're going to what? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Don't think me crazy. Okay. So now I think we've got these set up. Let's go take a look at some other things. So UI settings. Screensaver after five minutes. Eh, I like to go about 10 Screensaver behavior, dim, black, dim, let's go dim. Show frame rate off, on-screen help I like, transition style fade. Theme carbon, sure, I like this theme. Other settings, save metadata, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what the VRAM limit uh, I need is, but hey. Um, okay. So with that, we've got that taken care of. Next up, there is select. Okay, so now we have RetroPie. Now we have audio, Bluetooth, file manager, change password boot options. Okay, there is a lot of customization to do here. So for now, let's do something very basic. And Let's see something. Okay, A says launch. Well, here's what I'm guessing. Here, let's go back. I'm guessing the reason we don't see anything here is because there's really no ROMs on there. So how do we get ROMs on there? I actually have this solution, or at least I think I do. This is what I've been told. So what we got to do is we got to go back to the crafty computer. So hold tight. I'm not going to switch inputs, so we shouldn't get any jankiness. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to slap it right in the middle of everything. Okay, so here's my computer now. What I'm gonna do is, I'm going to introduce a USB device. USB device, to my knowledge, can be formatted in um, NTFS or uh, FAT32, mine's in NTFS. Click on it here, as you can see it says NTFS. And I'm supposed to make a folder and call it RetroPie, all lowercase. There we go. So if you're ready to see something crazy, then I close it. You guys can't see this. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry, guys. The sync is going to be a little off. I'm going to say it probably shortly after I do it. But anyway... Um, I'm ejecting the media and then I'm going to plug it into the RetroPie. And yes, this is a Micro Center thing. And yes, I'm not sponsored by Micro Center. 
And when I plug it in, it's supposed to blink lights like that. <laughs> he said, I don't know other people said janky. Uh, all right. So once the blinking's done, apparently this is ready to go. This is, uh, been set up a little bit. So when I plug it back into my computer, I should, sh I should see some new setup folders. So let's test this theory. Whoa, that doesn't look right. There we go. And now when I go into here, we can see there are new folders. There's BIOS, there's config files from and to. So this is the ones that can be written to the RetroPie. And most importantly, here's ROMs. And would you look at that? There's a bunch of ROM folders. All right, so the next step is let's open a second window. And just for fun, I'll show you guys this second window as well. So here's the one folder. Here's the second window. I'll navigate to my fuck Nintendo collection. We'll go to Genesis. We'll go over here. We'll open Mega Drive, which is the British version of the Genesis. Remember, RetroPie is mostly from Great Britain. We'll take all these guys and we will drag them over here and drop them. And in about, boop, there we go. Next thing, we'll come over here to see what we want to do next. Let's do NES. So we'll open the NES, go to the fuck Nintendo collection, go to NES. Ugh, I don't know the mouse shortcut for select all, so hold on. And we copy over here. And boop, they're there. And now let's go to the SNES. This is supposed to work. We'll see. Come over here to this one. Go back to ROMs and SNES. Take these, move these over. There we go. And then maybe for fun, we should come over here and do a couple TurboGrafx-16, right? Yeah, TG-16. What is it under? Probably PC Engine, yep. And uh, let's see. Secret best. PC Engine game. Hmm. Bonk? Okay. Bonk's kind of a shitty game. Bonk 2 is much better, but you know what? I don't want to be that negative Nancy. So let's come up here. We'll do Bonk's Adventure. Pop that over there. And why not? I am curious as to how some of these games run. So let's also do, uh, let's, ooh, what's Splatterhouse Chrome? I have no idea what that is. Let's find out. Uh, it might break the system. Who knows? But, uh, and then of course, Yo Bro. Everybody loves the classic Yo Bro. All right. Now with that underway, and uh, personal tastes aside, close both of these. And I'm now ejecting the USB drive. Now according to this, when I plug it back in, it should blink again, and then we'll actually see 
These ROMs show up on the RetroPie once it's loaded. I feel the chip set's a little warm. I think that's planned, though. Should be copying the ROMs. That's what we're waiting for. Green light is full fat. Okay, now that's all done. So now that it's all done, should be able to remove this. And apparently on my SD card, there's now a bunch of ROMs. Let's find out. So I'm switching back over to the RetroPie channel. And now I gotta figure out how to make this all work. So let's select RetroPie. And it says A to launch, so let's try launch. Did you hear it? I mean, it can't even drive the audio. Okay. Yeah, just a minute. Set audio output. Let's go HDMI. <laughs> Here's a coil. What? <laughs> How do you say okay? I might need to plug a keyboard in. So let's find out. Had to grab me a keyboard. Something happened. Okay, now. Okay, that wasn't what I needed. menu here we go all right so I'm gonna unplug this and let's see what happens if I restart the system I think I have to restart it for the ROMs to take let's see what happens Okay, it's starting up. Here we go. And this is exactly what I wanted to see. So let's give it a go. Nintendo. Oh, would you look at that? There they all are. And look at this. These are all the games that I wanted. Let's see if it can run Akamadra Densetsu. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's running. Oh, look at that. The transition effects are almost as good as the Famicom. Akamadra Densetsu, Legend of Demon Castle. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. All right, we'll just use good old Durf. Ah, 
I'd say we are. Okay, I'm gonna have to do some mild settings in Retroarch because I can see that it's not running as well as my AVS. But for the most part, like especially for Nintendo emulation. Wow, strip, strip with balloon fight. I know, right? What was I thinking? But yeah. So far it looks good. Let's see the shortcuts. Here we go, shortcuts. Select and start together exits. Look at that. Uh, let's go back. Let's go PC Engine. Let's go Yo Bro. And there's Yo Bro. I'm not even going to talk about how this violates so many things. Here we go. It's all Beach Boys, and there's licensing involved, too. This is like the Back to the Future game on NES, only worse. I collect chicks. Yeah, that's right. I did that. All right, and last but not least, let's go over... Uh, well, we'll check these both. So, I don't know why I'm on a Castlevania kick. Sorry. And it looks like it just auto configures them, which is the imp impressive part to me. Uh, yes, they do have save states. The save states are on here. Select and right uh, is increase and decrease, and then to save is select and right shoulder. So let's try it. So save states slot two, slot zero. So there you go. And if we Eric Lacard this thing. Just in case people are wondering what I'm doing. Genesis emulation looks great. Yeah, I mean, it's right as rain to me. Let's see if it does Sonic 3 complete. I'm curious. Yeah, it runs Sonic 3 complete. Cool. And of course, let's complete this whole thing. And let's see here. I'm wondering if it'll do Star Fox, but how do I piss people off the most? I mean, let's see if Star Fox runs, right? Because that's the one, it's a Super FX game. That's the one where you're like, I wonder. Yahtzee. And there are config options if you want to blow it up. And yes, this little box you're seeing here is the state of the screen. It did not take up the full screen back in the original game either. Yeah, like, it, this, is, this is running fine. This is running, it is even emulating the shitty frame rate. Oh no, missed it. All right, guys, I'm not going to lie. I'm starting to run out of time. But yeah, I would say hopefully this kind of explains stuff. This is a quick and easy thing to do.